Welcome to KJV Home Bible Study from the Man Cave. This is JC Ligar with Chloe Ligar, and we're going to continue with the Gospel of Matthew. This will be part 70. But before I do anything, I need to wish my beautiful daughter a happy 18th birthday for tomorrow. Yay! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Chloe. Happy birthday to you. Yay. Thank you. You're welcome, baby. And before I do anything else, Chloe, what do I need to do after that? Pray. <laughs> I need to pray. Father, thank you, Lord, that we can celebrate these things and have fun. Father, wow, my beautiful daughter turning 18. She is an adult. Father, I remember getting on my knees before you and crying out, God, I don't know how to be a dad. What do I do? And you told me, take it one day at a time and get into my word and I will show you how to do it. And you were faithful, Lord. I got a daughter who loves you and is faithfully serving you. I couldn't ask for anything more. Father, I pray the Holy Spirit would fill me right now and help me to teach this topic in a way that is clear and understandable and everybody can be blessed. I pray it in the name of Jesus and everybody said, Amen. Amen. In Matthew 11, 20 through 24, Then began he to abrade the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto you, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. Wow, some really heavy words from the Lord Jesus. Now we're going to be talking right now about Sodom and how God judged that city for its sin. Now, first of all, I don't want to bash anybody for their lifestyle. I've got friends who are gay. I've got friends who are lesbian. I even know people who are transgender. I got friends who are adulterers. I've got friends who are fornicators. I've got friends who are liars. I've got friends who are thieves. I got friends who are atheists. I have friends who are humans. All humans are sinners by birth and by choice. We all have our own personal struggles. And the thing is, I'm not picking on anybody. But the thing is, when Jesus did these miracles in these cities, it upset him that the people were enjoying the miracles, but they were not repenting and turning to him for salvation. They had this thought in their mind, well, God is a God of love. He accepts me the way I am. I don't have to change. That is using grace as a license to sin and for lasciviousness. And God will never be pleased with that attitude. So the land of Sodom, What's up with them? What did they do? Let's go to the Word of God and we're going to read and find out. In Genesis 19, 
And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the man of the city, even the man of Sodom, come past the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Now, the word know is how to know somebody sexually like a man knows his wife and pretty much what they're saying is bring out the men we want to rape them and lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him yeah, he's got guts and said i pray you brethren do not so wickedly behold now i have I want to punch this dude in the face for saying this stuff here. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. What a scumbag. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Yeah, what about your daughters? You, oh. <laughs> anyway. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot and came near to break the door. So they're about to rape Lot now. Which, you know what? He's willing to give up his daughters? I'm say, yeah, go ahead, have them. But anyway, I digress. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the man said unto Lot, Has thou here any besides son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city? Bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxen great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. So these are two other daughters that he has which are married, not the two virgin daughters that he had with him. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here again not the two which are still with their husbands 
lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the man laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth, and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Yeah, God's about to nuke the whole place. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my lord. Behold now, thy servant has found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shewed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Where? Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar, and the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Now remember, this poor woman has two daughters that are married in the town that just got destroyed. So her heart is looking back to see what became of them. But she was told, do not look back. And this is what happened to her. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord, and he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and towards all the land of the plain, and beheld, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. Wow. So again, you may say to yourself, my God that I worship is a God of love. He would never judge me for who I choose to love. He would never condemn me to hell. Okay, I agree with you. The God you worship would never do that. But the God of the Bible destroyed a whole city. He rained down fire and brimstone upon them for their wickedness. Now, I'm not picking on gays or lesbians only. God will also judge fornicators, people having sex outside of marriage. He will also judge adulterers, men who have sex with somebody else's wife, or a wife having sex with somebody else's husband. He's going to judge us all. Jesus even said, if I even look upon a woman to lust after her, I've committed adultery with her in my heart. So even looking at things like pornography. God considers that to be adultery of the heart. We need the mercy of God. And again, when God shows miracles or shows his goodness, it should burden in us an attitude of repentance. 
where we turn to God and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And let's see, why did God destroy Sodom? We'll see that in Jude. Jude 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So again, God of the Bible has sent these people to hell forever. They are in torment, burning. And God is doing that to set an example for those who would live in the future and want to follow their lifestyle. This is what you got to look forward to. God doesn't take any pleasure in the death and damnation of anyone. But when he has to judge, he's going to use them as an example for others to fear. God does that throughout the Bible. He'll judge some so severe that people are like, oh my gosh, what the heck is going on with that? It's an example for you to fear and not follow in their steps of wickedness. So what is the sin of Sodom? Let's look in Ezekiel 16. 48. As I live, saith the Lord God, Sodom, thy sister, has not done she nor her daughters as thou hast done, thou and thy daughters. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom, pride. They, you know, people today, they have a parade called a pride parade where they're celebrating what God calls an abomination. Fullness of bread and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw good. Again, the word abomination here. Let's see what God calls an abomination. Let's go to Leviticus 19. Oh, let's do 18 first. Eighteen twenty-two. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. And again, right here. If, uh, okay, Leviticus 20, 13. If a man also lie with a woman kind, as he lieth, uh, let me read that again. If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So you're saying that's not very loving. That's not very tolerant. Again, this is God we're dealing with. He's the one who makes the rules. You know, it would be so easy for me to rob a bank than to work. Because working is hard. I got to go and do all these things. And my paycheck isn't that great. But if I rob a bank, man, I could make a lot of money doing that. What keeps me from doing that? First, the fear of God. Second, the fear of the consequence of what will happen to me when I get caught robbing a bank. I'm going to lose my freedom. I'm going to be thrown in jail. And everybody that knows me will be ashamed of what I've done. 
they're going to say, hey, have you heard about JC, the Bible teacher? He robbed a bank. Now, again, I may have these feelings in me that says, hey, robbing a bank will make you happy. It'll make you satisfied. It'll give you everything you desire. But again, the fear of God and the fear of the consequence will keep me from listening to my fifis. God doesn't care about my fifis. He cares about me doing what is right. So let's look in Romans 1.18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God. Again, the glory of God is a huge rainbow around the throne of God. The alphabet community has taken the rainbow and perverted it to be their symbol. They took the glory of God and they changed it. Okay, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forevermore. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust, one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their heir which was meat. That's talking about STDs, like AIDS, herpes, Ghana, syphilis, you name it, all the sexually transmitted diseases. Whenever you are sleeping around and being immoral, you got this to look forward to, STDs. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Wow. 
So you're gonna say to me, JC, everything you said to me has highly offended me. You said you were my friend. How can I possibly be a friend to you and not tell you the truth? I don't want to be in heaven on judgment day and see you dragged before the holy God and have to give an account for your life and our eyes are going to meet and you're going to say, JC, why didn't you warn me? Why didn't you tell me about this? My hands are clean. I told you about this right now. Again, the purpose of every Bible study is to tell you the truth about the true living God of the Bible and hopefully the Holy Spirit is doing a work in your heart and is drawing you unto himself but again Jesus was among these cities and he was doing miracles which revealed that he was God in the flesh and they did not repent and he gave them that rebuke that he gave them. He said it will be more tolerable in the day of judgment for those that city of Sodom and Gomorrah than for you. One of the things that I like about, you know, like uh, comic book movies is they're dealing with alternate realities. Well, Jesus is able to say, you know what? If I would do these miracles on another world, in an other earth, and I went physically to Sodom and did those miracles there, they would have repented. This is the God we're dealing with, where he knows that kind of knowledge. Baffling. And he says, because they would repent, and you chose not to, I'm going to be more merciful on the day of judgment to a city I destroyed with fire and brimstone then I'm going to be for you, America. Think about that. In America, we got Bibles everywhere. We got churches on every corner almost. The accountability America will have on the day of judgment before God, ooh, the judgment will be so severe for us. But again, we're in the age of grace, the age of mercy. So I'm pleading with you, if you're committing these sins, repent for the love of God. Turn to Jesus, and he will give you a new heart with new desires. And those things that you are doing now that is an abomination in his eyes, he's going to change, and you're going to do those things that please him. All right, this was a tough one, and again, I'm not going to make a lot of friends, but I'd rather have you hate me for telling you the truth than to love me for telling you a lie. This is JC Ligar with Chloe Ligar. God bless you, everyone, and I'll see you next time from the Man Cave. Bye-bye.